Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out the Waytech Red Hair. This is a 5 inch racing drone and kind of a unique looking frame here. It's got these curved arms and uh, we'll take a closer look at that here in a second. Uh, specs on the frame, 5 millimeter arms or separated arms. The uh, rest of the plates are 2 millimeters thick, uh, 215 millimeters motor to motor, uh, 165 millimeters front to back, and 137 millimeters side to side. So this model does come with the uh, DYS uh, Sam Gook series motors here. These are the uh, 2306-2500 kV. Pretty good motor uh, and also pretty inexpensive. Uh, as you can see here, you can see the magnets and the windings of the motor. And it's, it's, this motor has been reviewed quite a bit already. It's got a hollow shaft, C-clip on the bottom. I think it's about 10 bucks. Uh, you can also see one of the downsides of the frame here. There's absolutely no motor protection whatsoever. If you hit the concrete or something, the motor bell is probably going to get damaged if, on this frame. So that's a con on this frame. Also another con on this frame is going to be the exposed camera. Yeah, it's totally exposed there. Uh, but uh, the camera kind of is uh, also a con as well. Uh, let's just say that if I crash this and destroy the camera, I wouldn't cry because I'll just be replacing it with another one anyway. Uh, this is the same 16.9 CMOS camera. It's not a CCD camera as they explain in the product page. This is the same camera that was, has been on a lot of these racing drones that are come, that come pre-built here that seem to come from sort of these second, third tier manufacturers. They, I think this camera is just, um, they, someone, someone out there made a whole bunch of these and are selling them for dirt cheap so they can put them in, into these models. But this camera is not a good camera for these racing drones because the vertical field of view is terrible. It's really, really narrow. I have very, li very little camera tilt on here, maybe 20 degrees, and I can't even see the ground when I'm trying to land. So you'll see that in the flight demo. It's uh, pretty frustrating. I'm getting kind of tired of seeing this camera. So you guys, the manufacturers out there, uh, don't buy this camera anymore. It's not a good camera. It's got decent color reproduction. It's got a decent image. But it's a 169 camera with no vertical field of view, so it's terrible for these racing drones. And you can't get any up tilt on this uh, unless you get like <laughs> massive tilt on the camera where you can't you can take off. It's going to be really impossible to land. So something that I really dislike about this, ca this this particular camera is that vertical field of view, and I wish that these manufacturers would stop using it. Um, the flight stack here is just a two board stack. You got a Beel Heli 32. Uh, 400 EC, and I believe it's a 40 amp, and then you get a F4 flight controller with a VTX on the same board here, and uh, you know, this stack is pretty decent. I had no problems with that. Uh, changing the channel in the VTX is a pain because there's a you have to go in the back here, and you're probably not going to see the buttons. Yeah, they're, not, they're kind of dark, too dark in there, but the buttons are back in here for changing the bands and channels on the uh, video transmitter, and, that's, and because there's no smart audio, no VTX remote control. That is another downside on this one. I think that pretty much anything that comes out ought to have that feature. Or, um, yeah, basically it should have that feature. If it doesn't, then that's definitely a negative. Now this model did come with uh, XM Plus receiver. This is the uh, FreeSky Bind and Fly version. Uh, and uh, this also comes available as a plug and play with no receiver. It's about a $10 difference, so it's about $240 for the plug and play and $250 for the Bind and Fly. And I'll get into the price here in a little bit. Uh, the video transmitter antenna here is actually a TBS uh, Triumph antenna, and I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, here we go, you can see there it's etched into the connector in the bottom, and then there's a, uh, this is a TBS, yeah, the TBS logo right there. So it's a genuine TBS antenna, apparently that's where a lot of the cost went. I would have preferred they spend the money not on the antenna, but on the camera instead of the antenna, because you can probably get a generic antenna and get 80% of the performance of this works. You, you want to put more money into the camera, I think, in my opinion. Okay, so here's the weight without a battery. It's coming in at 307 grams, and it's not too heavy. And let's take a look at the arms again here. Now, it is a curved arm, but it is kind of running parallel to the uh, way the fibers run along the arm, so it's fairly stiff, but it's a very thin arm, and it is curved, and it is only connecting here in these, I believe only on these two points. So it's, uh, I didn't get any flex, I didn't get any vibrations from the frame or anything, but it, I, 
you know, while it's kind of a unique looking design, it kind of reminds me of the Hollywood Copus 1. Uh, I would have preferred straight arms versus the curved arms, and I'm not sure if replacement arms are easily available. And on top of that, uh, there's no motor protection on the ends of the arms. If you're going to get this, I would try and find some sort of 3D printed motor guard that you could, you know, bolt to the bottom here that would stick out. That would give a little bit more cushion for the motor in case of a crash. The arm, I mean, overall the carbon's nice. I mean, it's all chamfered, it's all cut nice. Yeah, I didn't get cut by any carbon, there's no carbon dust, that kind of thing. The frame itself is nice. I think they sell the frame by itself. If you can buy the frame, a replacement frame for like 50 or 55 dollars, that's a kind of a, you know, it's not a cheap frame, but if you if you want a replacement frame, it is available. If you want to get, if you want to buy one. Okay, so I guess the bottom line here is is this something that you would want to buy, or would you want to perhaps go for a different model? And I think that you know, if you look at the price, um, at 250, the uh, Emacs Hawk 5 is the same price as has. I think. Um, I think overall that's a better model. It comes, it flies out better out of the box. This one required a setup. It had no, uh, basically they just flashed beta flight and nothing else. Um, and it was an older version. It was on 3.2. I actually updated it to 3.33. And uh, I did fly it on the stock PIDs and that seemed to fly okay. You'll see that. I'll talk about that in the flight demo. It was a little bit loose. But, you know, if you're looking for uh, a model where you have to not bother to set it up, then this is not it because it, comes basically with nothing set up on there. And in terms of the components, I think that the motors are better than the motors on uh, the Hawk 5. Those are like 2206 motors, lower KV. This is, this is, the motors are definitely better on this model versus the Hawk 5. The uh, ESCs I think are better on this one. They're 32-bit they're, uh, ESCs and they were, uh, they were actually updated. I have to actually update those, so that was all fine. Um, kind of neutral on the flight controller video transmitter here. I wish it had smart audio, but again, the Hawk 5 doesn't have that either. And then the camera on the Hawk 5 is much better. It's got a Fox here. I think it's a micro error. That's a way better camera with much better field of view than this camera here. Plus the camera protection on the Hawk 5 is much better than this one. This one has virtually no protection for the camera or the motor. So the frame gets a, it gets a, you know, uh, some positives for aesthetics and cosmetics, but in terms of functionality, it gets very poor marks in my opinion. Yeah, so I think unless uh, this comes down at a much lower price point, I would say in the 170 to uh, 195 range, I think I wouldn't even consider this unless it's down in that price range because, uh, you know, you could just buy the motors and the, uh, some of these parts really off the shelf and put it out to a better frame if you're just going to, and if you're going to bother doing all that, you might as well just build your own custom build. So uh, unless they drastically reduce the price, it, there's better models out there like the uh, Hawk 5 and even the diatones are in that sort of, you know, 225, 250 range. I think the GTR, the Rabbit, that one's even way better than this model. So that's my recommendation on this, you know, uh, I'd say pass for now unless the price comes way, way down. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you looked at this maybe like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, sure, but there's much better stuff out now. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you the flight demo. You guys can watch that and let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. <laughs> Already getting a low battery warning for some reason. I think the numbers on here are kind of off. The voltage, the voltage reading was seemed off. I'm just flying with stock uh, beta flight 3. 3.3 three, three, stock PIDs didn't come with any kind of a setup. It came with 3.2.0 with no nothing absolute nothing set up on there. So I'm not sure, not sure why I'm giving a low battery warning already. But the motors are very smooth. And I'm probably not going to go too long on this battery just because I don't know what the voltage is like. But let's give you an idea what the performance is like here. Yeah, it could use a little bit of a pit tune. That's full speed. Got quite a bit of a voltage sag there. So I'm going to go off the timer instead of uh, the voltage because I think that's obviously way off.
It's got plenty of power. The video transmitter seems to be working okay. Uh, camera is okay. It's a 16 by 9 camera. But yeah, if you're looking for a 4.3 camera, this isn't it. It's going to limit your field of view vertically. So I can't really go full speed forward and low to the ground. So I think this is one of the things you're going to want to change is the camera. But it has plenty of power. The motors are great. These DYS motors are pretty inexpensive, 10 bucks each. Yeah, it does need a little bit of a pitch tune, and the rates are a little bit more than I'm used to for this setup. I think I should adjust that. But not bad for just stock Betaflight PIDs. It's just a little bit on the loose side for my taste. But if you like a loose PID tune, stock PIDs should be just fine. Yeah, in terms of rollings and Rolls are okay. Yeah, just I'm a little, I think my rates on the flips are a little bit off. About three and a half minutes. I think the battery should be okay. Yeah, that voltage reading can't be right. Should be more more towards 14, not 15. I don't feel any kind of a sag in terms of power on the battery. See a little bit of jello coming through on this camera, it's a CMOS camera. Okay, now I'm starting to feel a little bit of a sag on the battery, so I'll go ahead and land it now. Obviously the warnings and the voltage meter are totally off on this one, probably the current sensor as well. That needs to be all calibrated, but I just flashed stock Betaflight 3.3, and that's uh, the numbers that I got. But the performance seems okay. Not bad. Yeah, the vertical field of view on this camera is so limited, it's very hard to land. I'm going to have to come in very low here. Yeah, it's hard to see the ground.